let me welcome Nick to come here and uh, share uh, their experience with fast radius. So as you mentioned, um, my name is Nick Sinini. Um, with fast radius, I run the operation sides of our um, entire company, really. I kind of want to take you uh, step by step on where fast radius came from, where we are currently, where we're trying to go. So back in 2014, um, our two founders, Mitch Free and Rick Smith, I don't have this, I don't think, um, were just finishing up their, their current companies, selling them off, and were looking for something to do. And uh, Mitch, being deeply in the manufacturing industry, had created a company which um, connected uh, suppliers with um, people who needed empty machines. Uh, he realized that the traditional manufacturing methods, um, while people are focusing on becoming more lean and agile in that field, was still a, get, it was an old process. Um, you know, if you're traditionally, if you're trying to manufacture um, plastics, you'd have to create a mold, uh, have a lot of uh, large um, machinery, which was specific to that exact part. Um, downsides to that, the molds up front costs are very expensive um, and, and sometimes slow to make if you're um, trying to become mass producing or to get the molds themselves. Um, you're also stuck with the designs and there's design limitations on traditional um, injection molding processes. Uh, CNC also has its design limits on how um, you know, a, a machine can or a part can be machined. Um, the turnaround is also fairly slow, uh, usually a couple weeks time, and it uh, can be wasteful at times. So, in an attempt to minimize time and costs uh, on many different levels, we came up with this idea of uh, distributed manufacturing. The idea behind that is instead of having these factories around the world where, um, say, your, your, your company is based manufacturing um, out of China and then shipping parts around the world. Uh, this idea is that you can have production facilities around the world um, in a network that has the flexibility to make many different types of parts and, and the way you do that is with 3D printing. So back in the end of 2014, um, from the very beginning we teamed up with UPS and said uh, that we want to start putting these manufacturing facilities in your all's distribution hubs. Uh, we started with Louisville. And uh, out of Louisville, we are manufacturing for North America. Uh, just recently, we opened a, a facility in Singapore. So uh, we have the ability to um, manufacture in Asia and, and the rest of the world uh, between the two facilities. And we're looking at um, a facility in Germany coming up. This has really cut down on the, the turnaround times. Uh, basically all those aspects that uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, we've been able to minimize. Uh, with these facilities being inside the UPS hubs, instead of a couple weeks time turnaround on parts, you're looking at um, us printing them and having to your doorstep within 24 hours. Um, so all the time we, we end up shipping out parts at 1 a.m. here in Louisville, and they're at people's doorsteps at 9 a.m. in the morning. I'd say there's um, five main groups that we um, primarily make parts for. You got your prototyping groups, which um, you know I've, I've been using 3D printing for decades now. Uh, the, the main benefit we give to them is our speed. Uh, a lot of times, the prototyping. Um, if they don't have the machines in house, it may be a, a week or so before they get the prototypes. With us, they can get those uh, design iterations within 24 hours. You've got the, the low production uh, model, which uh, if, if you're creating parts uh, at a volume that doesn't make sense to create a, a mold for injection molding, the upfront cost for injection molds may be fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. A lot of times it makes more sense to uh, have the 3D printed at, at lower volumes. Um, we've got this idea of uh, custom parts. 
So uh, more and more we're seeing people who are um, desiring parts to be custom made to them. We've got uh, custom made implants for uh, knee replacements that are using MRI scans so that they uh, you know, have less recovery time on the, on the patients and it's a perfect fit. Uh, we've got the consumer goods which people are desiring um, custom fit earbuds or um, you know even the ability to create dolls that are um, mimic your child's face with a, with a 3D scan. Uh, we're, we're able to have that flexibility with 3D printing because we're not stuck to a single mold and uh, we, can, we can quickly turn that around uh, with the UPS logistics. We also have emergency parts. So a lot of times we have production lines uh, that go down because a part breaks. And instead of having to send them out to get machined or um, shipped over from the other side of the world where there might be another facility with that same part, they are coming to us and just asking us to make them on the spot. And then the, the last group is uh, this idea of virtual inventory where currently across the world there's warehouses that have uh, millions of parts sitting in them that are just waiting to be used. The idea with virtual inventory is you can uh, have these uh, parts as a file in the cloud and as you need them you can have them printed out and manufactured. You don't have to have the storage costs which is billions of dollars a year. So we're, we're slowly turning this um, this large factory and warehouse idea into uh, really a cloud-based sort of idea. Uh, with this network of, of hundreds of printers currently, and we're growing every day, uh, we're able to quickly manufacture these parts and get them to customers on demand instead of having to have things on your shelves. Um, currently, we've got numerous locations here in the United States that are serving the North American area. Um, our, our main quick turnaround locations here in Louisville because of the hub, uh, but we also have um, some CNC locations in Atlanta as, as well as numerous other locations. Um, a lot of those being UPS stores across the country have 3D printers in there for us. Uh, like I said, we just opened up a, a facility in Singapore. Um, and what, the, these new facilities are really targeted around the UPS hub so that we can uh, widen this, this quick turnaround logistics that we've uh, built the whole business on. Um, in the end of 2017, I expect us to be in Germany and, um, you know, really increasing the speeds to Europe. Cologne has a great UPS hub that they based out of. Um, you know, as far as where the business goes, our, our consumers are really driving what we're doing. Um, I, I've been talking to a couple of you here recently and it seems like the, the 3D uh, printing technology is, is advancing so quickly and the, the demands of the customers, they're, they're used to these injection molded parts of those machine parts and getting 3D printing to speed up um, depending on what they need is what's driving what kind of machines we're bringing in. So as you know, you all are developing new materials and stuff and, and different processes, um, it's, it's really going to quickly come into the manufacturing fields because that's what we really need. Um, and then the last thing we, we need is a, to really get this manufacturing idea off the ground is the engineers to, to start designing for 3D printing. You know, we're finding more and more that the engineers are used to designing parts for traditional manufacturing methods. Undercuts for CNC, are, are considered, where with 3D printing it might not be such a consider, uh, considerment. I think that's about all I have. Does anyone have any questions? Yes? I'm just a little confused on what you guys do, but is it only plastics or are you doing metal, plastics? We, we do plastics, metals, uh, we do a little bit of everything. Um, we're not only 3D printing, we're also CNC, injection molding, urethane casting. Uh, really all aspects of manufacturing. Um, but but our, our, our target is to create this network based on 3D printing because we think that is where the future is going and it gives us the most flexibility. So is the network independent companies that you're outsourcing to? Or is it under your control? It's, it's all under our control. 
Um, so we we've currently have, I think on Friday, we were up, we, we were around 300 printers in our network and we're growing every day. Um, you know, many of those networks, I, I believe 60 or 70 of those are in UPS stores um, scattered throughout the country. So the idea is, you know, you can go down to your store and, and pick up the file later in that day just to speed up the, you know, production time even quicker. Um, we, we base this whole idea that, you know, if you've got an army of 3D printers, you can, you know, if you've got enough 3D printers, you can make production of any size. So um, that, that's why we have so many 3D printers and why we're putting them in so many places. And then can you comment, you know, if I had a part mm -hmm. design, Yes. I email it to you guys, you put it into the STL and send it off to a, a location? So a lot of our, our company is based on our technology. We've actually created software where currently you could go to our website and you can upload all your STL files or your, um, your uh, you know, step files and it will convert them to STL files in your drawings and uh, you'll have this library on our website where when you're ready for the part you can check out just like you were buying clothes online and as soon as you pay for it hit the checkout button uh, many of our machines are actually automated so as soon as you hit that checkout button the machines will self-load themselves print the part eject the part and grab the next part in the queue so um, the, the easiest way is just to send the files up um, by yourself on the website. We obviously have sales teams for, um, you know, people who are concerned with uh, different orientations that uh, may not be defaulted on the website or different um, critical tolerances. They want to make sure, um, you know, the quality control people uh, verify before it gets shipped out. But um, we're, we're, we're slowly moving away from the... Um, this, the time-consuming uh, process of manually throwing files into software and then uploading them manually. Yes? My question is of Tom's question, but from a biology perspective. So from everything I've heard today, it looks like the industry is mostly focused on things like uh, transportation or you know, factory manufacturing components, mm -hmm. but uh, we are interested in developing 3D biological so is there a possibility that based on consumer demand, you might need that? Oh, absolutely. Um, we're working with numerous companies that are, are doing customized uh, bio implants currently based off MRI scans and converting them into, um, you know, the parts they need. We, we, don't have, we don't have any printers invested in actual bio tissue, um, which I know is a, a very new field, uh, but as that gets developed more and more, I, I don't see why we can't start adding them into our network. Uh, we see a vision where in the future, if you need a heart, all you have to do is hit print, and we can have it to you in 24 hours, you know? Um, it, it's just, as the technology progresses, I think we'll, we'll see more and more of that. Yes? So a lot of the, the initial steps with the virtual inventory um, are primarily going to be parts which don't get used every day. Uh, we do have customers who are, who are partnered with that we, um, we're, we're developing software where if uh, a customer goes on their website and checks out, the, the parts actually come to us to print and then we ship directly to the, the customer to minimize that time. Uh, but for the most part, you find, you find companies which may have a, a 60 year old forklift that they don't want to have a warehouse of parts just in case one of those parts breaks. They want to have these files uh, ready 
to replace those parts instead of having to have a warehouse full of them. Um, so it's, it's slowly, as our, as our capacity is growing, I, I expect us to see more and more of this uh, on-demand production uh, being used with the virtual inventory. Uh, but for the meantime, it's, it's fairly low volume. Any other questions? All right, thank you.